Hi, uh, my name is Dave Lane and I live on a residential street in Kettering, Northamptonshire. The properties I live in um, is very typical of a British, uh, tur you know, turn of the century, 1900s, brick built, three bedroomed house on a road with 200 of the houses, all very, very similar. Um, except what we've done on the back, we've created an extension. I'm going to take you in there in a minute. and I'm going to show you what's slightly different about this extension. It's a first, uh, first story, first floor extension, just one large room, but it has um, not been brick built from bricks and mortar and masonry. It's a natural build. It's a very eco build, um, built from hempcrete and wood fiber. And now, as the building is um, in, in in the completing stages before all the plaster goes on, now is the time to make a video to talk about the nature of the build, uh, the advantages of it, <clears throat> the disadvantages, and the costs. So the first thing is, there used to be a window there. It used to look out into the back garden. Now there's a door. And on the other side of the door is a large single story extension. Eight meters long, just over three meters wide. Not radically different from a typical extension of this size, really. Except you perhaps notice that the walls look a little bit different that side. Then when we pan round here and go into the ceiling, again, very different. So, typically you might build a single storey extension off the back of a house like this out of block work with an outer layer of brick. Maybe you might use a cavity wall type construction where you would tie in the two walls. Um, I'm particularly, um, I particularly dislike cavity wall builds. Um, they were originally developed in the eastern part of the UK in the late Victorian period uh, because of driving rain coming through nine inch walls and causing damp on the inside. So they came up with this idea of a cavity. Um, the problem now is that Builders only know how to build with cavity walls. Every bricklayer knows how to build a cavity wall. All modern houses are built by bricklayers, therefore they're all pretty much built. Um, but there's nothing good about them. Um, the cavity is extremely difficult to insulate. Retrofitting it, i.e. you know, cutting a hole in the brickwork and filling it full of materials, doesn't work. The main problem is, is uh, moisture and condensation building up <clears throat> in the cavity. When there is nothing in that cavity and you've got airflow, that's absolutely fine. But when you fill it with insulation, it becomes a moisture trap. And perhaps um, using modern um, recycled small glass baubles is probably about the only material that could feasibly work. The other way is to use uh, phenolic foam, foil back foam, when you are building the property and you put that against the inner layer of brick and you leave the outer layer with still a void in there. Um, better still, build houses out of solid masonry walls than external wall insulate them. This way you will turn the brick wall into a heat sink. Now that brings us on to this material here, hempcrete. So the build on this is a full timber what we call a timber stick construction. So the sticks being the uprights that you see here, this is a timber frame. <clears throat> and here's exposed timbers there. So what we've used is what we call four by two, going all the way around. Um, so the timber is four inches thick, but the wall is 35 centimeters thick so it's over 12 inches thick on the outside uh, to build this you put a, a formwork of wood so you use OSB sheeting on the outside and then you use um, you, you basically use this you use plastic piping as a spacer you put a very 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 long screw 35 inch screw uh, 35 centimeter screw from the outside sticking to the wooden frame here but on the other 
side of the frame and that creates a large void and then you just simply backfill that with hempcrete and you build it up. Hempcrete, what is it? Right. This is, this gritty stuff you see is chopped up pieces of the stem from the hemp plant. So there's a little piece of it there. It's just very woody. Why hemp? Because it's the second fastest growing plant and there are some very good properties within the hemp uh, plant to make it a very good insulator. <clears throat> you then mix it in a mixer with a lime binder, so like a mortar really, and you create like a papier-mâché type of material. But it's full of air. Can you see how bitty it is? Because it's full of air. There's a piece of chopped out hemp, so you can kind of see, it's quite thick, well, it's very thick at 35 centimetres. It's also <clears throat> strong. You can flake little bits off, but it's strong. It is not, it won't take compressive loads. So what we have is a material that is the insulator and it's the main walling material all in one. The timber frame is to support the weight of the roof because the hempcrete will not take the compressive weight. If you were to build uh, another natural build material is to use straw bales. Because straw bales are so very tightly packed together, you can actually stack them on top of each other and then rest your roof directly onto the straw bales and believe it or not they will take the weight. Straw bales can actually take um, significant compression weight uh, weights. Hempcrete can't, uh, certainly not in 35 centimetres, maybe if you did it two or three feet you might get some strength in it then. Uh, what it is very good for is racking so the building won't be able to move from side to side. These timber frames, once they're in and held in the hempcrete, aren't going to bend. So the, the hempcrete makes the building very strong because it can't wobble. So that's one side. In fact, if we look at the window there, you get an idea of the wall thickness. The radiator in the corner is just not a big radiator. <clears throat> just to quickly show you, um, that's all that's going to be heating this place because it is so well insulated, it won't need much else. So, now this stuff on the on the wall, well that clearly isn't hempcrete. Nope, that is wood fibre insulation. So let me see if I can find a bit for you. There. That's what this is. On the roof, the, the ceiling here, it is 45 centimeter, 45 mil thick. On the wall here, it is 60 centimeters thick. And this is the stuff. Wood fiber comes from the sawmills of Poland and Germany and a lot of uh, uh, countries out in the east. And it is the residue material from the wood, fi the wood um, industry, the timber in industry. So they're cutting trees down and they're cutting them into planks and they're creating huge quantities of waste sawdust. So what they do is they compress it. Now, <clears throat> you get various types of wood fibre. So first of all, we have what I call the fluffy stuff. This is very light, and as you can see, I can put my fingers in it and just pull it apart. So this stuff is has a lot more air in it than this. This is more like a board. Uh, both are good insulators, but this one is the better because it has more air in it. So the wall build up here, this is the shower room. You can see in the back, sorry about the light. So between the joists, we've got the fluffy insulation. The joists on this side are six inches thick. So this insulation bat, so a bat is a large slab, a large block. Can you see on the floor? There is another bat of insulation, another slab. This is 140 um, mil, it's 14 centimeters thick, and it goes right in there. And 
for the main wall, I then overlaid that with 60. So I now have 200 um, millimeters, 20 centimeters thick insulation. The reason I've taken it off in the shower room is I need more space in here because it's a little bit tight. <clears throat> the offcuts I'm going to put into the walls, into the stud walls. Um, this is an internal. This is, this, is, this is an internal wall. It's insulated. It doesn't need to be, but I've got lots of this material left over, and it is particularly good for soundproofing. So, because this shower room is directly off the main room, it wouldn't be a bad thing if it had some soundproofing in it. So that's the reason for that. Uh, hempcrete. Once you install it, is very very easy to work. These grooves here, channeling. It's for wires. So I'm installing sockets. It's very, very easy once you've built the walls just to use um, an electric, little electric saw and to very, very quickly channel it out. It comes out very easily. You can bury your cables in the wall nice and easily. It's a lot easier than doing that with plaster. Over the top of this is going to be skimmed a render of lime. You cannot use gypsum, mortar-based um, uh, renders, on a natural insulation material because they are not breathable. They are not hygroscopic. Lime is breathable. This means that vapour and uh, can pass through it. So when you get a vapour build up in the room, especially in the winter months, condensation and stuff, it will sit a little bit in the hempcrete and a little bit in the lime and then it will dry out later. That's absolutely fine. It's what they call breathability. So the air isn't going to pass from inside to outside very much, but moisture will. If you were to put gypsum plaster onto these walls, within three, four, five years, this hempcrete would start to rot out badly and you'd get a major structural failure. So where you have uh, Tudor buildings that are built in heavy oak frame and then they have Watland daub infill, where... Silly builders in the 60s and 70s came along and repaired that with gypsum. You will find those buildings start to rot. Where they are done with lime, you will find those oak buildings for five or six hundred years are still absolutely sound, and it's to do with lime. So lime, as a building material for natural buildings, is essential. You cannot use gypsum. And it's the same on the wood fibre. Wood fibre has the same hygroscopic properties as hempcrete and it will allow the building to breathe. So on the one hand, this is a super insulated building, but it is also breathable. So the air quality in here will be very good and the moisture levels will be very low. Um, <laughs> particularly low, because we're gonna have a little kitchenette here and there's a little hole, we're gonna have an extractor fan. So obviously where we've got a buildup of steam from cooking, from kettles, you do need mechanical ventilation to get that out. The walls won't be able to cope with that level of condensation, but normal everyday breathing from people, absolutely fine. And this will create a really, really healthy and nice environment in here. Okay, how does this compare to bricks and mortar? Well, um, it's incredibly difficult to make the comparison, actually. Uh, the cost comparison, well, it's just, it is more expensive using hempcrete. Uh, this extension has cost us around 30,000. Um, a lot of those costs are caught up in materials from the timber to the phenomenal amounts of screws to the flooring down here. That's kind of standard. Uh, but the hempcrete itself is more expensive. It's not massively more expensive. It's probably about 25% greater costs. Um, the difficulty is, well, one of the advantages is this is a home build. So I've done this myself and I'm not a professional builder. It's a home build DIY job. If it was bricks and mortar, you'd have a brick layer in. And frankly, they would do this in about three or four days. They would have had the whole building up. Um, so doing the hempcreting, it took me and my partner, it, we were just working at the weekends and it took us, you know, six weekends to do it. Um, had I had my time again working with this material with hempcrete, I would have, uh, constructed double frames. And can you see these gable end? Can you see that timber? That's timber. So there are two frames, one there and one there. And the hempcrete fills 
And that whole unit, that whole unit going there and one there, we call that, we can call that a cassette. So it is a frame infilled with insulation and you could actually build this outside. You could have laid it down outside. We could have laid it flat. We could have filled it full of hempcrete. Once the hempcrete dries off, lift it into place because these walls are not at all heavy. This would be, this cassette here would be very liftable with two people. And we could have gone along and just used cassettes along. If I was going to do another hempcrete building, I would do that because it would save a lot of time. So therefore save costs and therefore the costs would become more comparable with bricks and mortar. Um, also, I think if hempcrete were to take off and it would be grown in much, much greater quantities and used in greater quantities, you would get the costs coming right down. Um, and you could comfortably get the costs down to a, a, a level being comparable with uh, bricks and mortar. And then um, if the market, if the commercial market in Hempcrete were to grow big enough, over a few years you could actually start to, be, to bring it, make, to make it cheaper. So as a build system, it is more labour intensive. It is slower and therefore more costly than bricks and mortar. There are an awful lot of highly qualified bricklayers out there. So, um, uh, you know, market value means that uh, it, it can be cheaper to do it that way. Um, the finished quality will, no, will never be as good. You, you simply can't get masonry to perform as well as natural materials in terms of uh, livability and insulation. So when you are building a building from those two sorts of materials, you kind of need to know why you're doing them. So why did I use hempcrete and wood fibre? Firstly, I wanted to specifically do a self-build. I wanted to literally build it with my bare hands, and that is literally what I've done. <laughs> I've made the frame, but mixing the hempcrete is something that is mixed by hand, and it is literally laid by hand. You pour it out of big buckets, and you tamp it down, and you shape it, and you form it with your fingers. So it's very satisfying um, and to, to build a home your own way doing that is a very satisfying way and I think that's one of the key drivers why self-builders tend to use natural insulation materials. Um, the other area, the other reason why I wanted to do this was because um, I believe that the more people buy these materials the bigger the market and the more we can move away from working with conventional um, high carbon materials. Let us bear in mind that if you build from um, masonry, from brick, you are everything about the value. Everything about what you're building with has just got a carbon footprint. Um, the carbon footprint for this building is really in the uh, the transport of the materials. But actually, hemp is a really, really good plant for sequestering carbon, for locking in carbon, and of course, timber is as well. So I've got a timber frame, timber insulation, and hemp. So I've got a very large amount of carbon locked up in this building. The question is, do I have, uh, have I, is this carbon negative, this build? Which means, carbon negative means that I've actually got more carbon locked up in the building than was extended, uh, expended in the creation of the building. If I'm honest, I would have to say no in this case. I think in a very urban environment, uh, such as this residential street that I mentioned I live on, you can, if you look out there, you can just, you know, you can see the standard late Victorian type houses. Having things delivered on lorries, all the fuel miles, you know, this wood fibre stuff isn't produced in the UK, so it's had to come uh, across from across Europe. Um, the hemp is from the UK, but the lime binder is coming from France. So again, there's fuel miles in this. Um, I don't think uh, this building sequesters carbon. I think it still has a carbon footprint, but I think my carbon footprint is massively less than had I built out of bricks and mortar. Um, again, my windows are wood here, all timber. I have a real dislike for UPVC windows. 
and typically if you look at a plastic window you will see that the frames on them have to be very thick because plastic is an inherently structurally weak material therefore UPC, UPVC windows have to be very thick to try and get some of the strength back. Timber is considerably stronger so you can have timber um, uh, windows that are a lot thinner frankly. So as an example, just go and look at any old school sash windows. Had to give out here the skylight. Yeah, that's plastic. Um, it's, you know, we would have had, we could have built our own upstand and built our own. Um, but um, with the, the speed and the scale, it was another thing that we would have had to have made. So we, I just went and bought one off the shelf, installed it in a couple of hours. Um, and it, it saved a lot of time and a lot of um additional expense um so um all in all hempcrete is it worth it and wood fiber absolutely i'm going to have a building that needs a little piddling radiator to heat At the moment there's no heating in here i'm talking to you in mid-november 2020 and it's quite chilly outside it's not in here it's very still it's very quiet it's very calm <clears throat> The building over there, my first hempcrete building, with its oh look at that, with its lovely green roof, living green roof. Um, this hempcrete was laid in it's 2020 now. This was laid in 2017, and it has not been covered up. It's not been rendered. And it gets a lot of water strike on it and it doesn't bother it it just dries out again um hempcrete is a very durable material like that this building was built as an experiment really um and also to cut my teeth for when i come back for the main extension in fact here's a side view <coughs> you can see the back of the house and you can see the extension this is clad in timber in cedar timber um, and this has a flat roof. The flat roof is going to have is going to have <coughs> made into a living roof as well. Uh, so the garden here gets extended onto the roof. <coughs> <coughs> but this was my first experimental build. And as I say, the hempcrete is uncovered, and it's absolutely fine. It hasn't deteriorated at all. Quite a remarkable substance, really. Going inside very briefly. Um, the walls here aren't hempcrete. This is a boarding called wood wool, and it is wood mixed in with cement. It's very, very open, very breathable. So I don't mind putting against hempcrete. The walls behind it are hempcrete. <coughs> if this was to be rendered again, it would have to be in lime. And here is the lime that we're going to use from a company called Best of Lime, and it's called, well, Lime Coat bags and bags and bags of it and that's going to be used to render the walls in the main building any leftover i may have a go at this this material this wood wood wool is a good support good hanger it's very gritty it's very porous so um the uh, lime render would stick to it very nicely but it will also stick to the wood wool um sorry the wood fiber insulation on the ceiling okay so there you are, I think I've covered just about everything I wanted to cover. Actually, no, I think there is one th other thing I wanted to mention um, about using natural materials in an urban environment. It's the bulk. When the hempcrete turned up, it came on four pallets and it comes in big plastic bags. So it's, although it's not heavy, it takes up a lot of space. And the same with the wood fibre insulation, it took up a lot of space, so it all had to be stored on the patio and around the house, and it was it became difficult. When you're working with things like bricks and mortar, um, they are not so space hungry. So you bring them along, you install them quickly, and in that respect, it's probably easier. One of the difficulties, I think, with doing a natural build in a highly urban environment is the the amount of the the amount of space that everything took up so that was a challenge at times um and we're just reclaiming our outside space again after a few years
so far this build is going into year two the red the lime render is going on within just before christmas 2020 um and from then it's installed the shower room and we we're good to go we've, we've got a building an operational building i'll put some uh, i'm going to put some timber um clip clap flooring down oak flooring to finish this and um and we're done so um i hope you found this uh, to be helpful and interesting and uh pop us a question if you if you have any okay thank you very much